Good folks, welcome to this live play of Crown of Roses. This is a, a game designed by Stephen Coiler and published by GMT Games in 2012. And this is my very first playthrough. I'm playing it um, solo, two-handed, basically. So I'm playing as the house of Lancaster. You can see them out here on the left. These are their offices secured in the, the first parliament phase and in the first turn. And this is the House of York. Over here, very close, and with their three officers secured in that parliament phase. Um, uh, ooh, yeah, so I've played through the first turn just to get a handle on the rules. Um, and uh, we've, we've uh, pretty much ready to go on the second turn. I have done the, I'll show you the sort of sequence of play. Here we are. So, uh, where are we? Oops, just bumped in. Where we've done wintering, uh, remove all depleted markers. Nothing is depleted. Um, available blocks become inactive. I think I've already done that. Yep. Turn over Margaret, didn't use that. And because I didn't use Margaret, I need to find. Margaret, I've lost track of Margaret. Here she is. If I don't use her, I may hold up to two cards. Well, I didn't do that anyway. I used all my cards. Um, popular support adjustment, no blocks in exile. Nothing there, nothing there. Advance a turn marker. So we can move to turn two and Edward of March becomes available for play. We can then get to the start of the draw phase. Now, I've got the draw deck right in front of me here. Uh, at the start of each turn, the first thing we do is draw a base hand. So it's basically five cards each. One, always at least five. But then you draw bonus cards for various things. So uh, Lancaster gets one bonus card for being king. They get another bonus card for controlling London. Uh, you also get a bonus card for controlling Calais and a card for having the Warwick block. Now, House of York has the Warwick block, so they get a bonus card for that. You then also get bonus cards for your placement on the popular support card. So they get an extra card, and they get two extra cards, because they're up to here. It's just off camera, but you'll see popular support provides little extra bonuses, a bonus to influence, votes, and bonus card draws. Now, this will tell us how many cards we have. Red has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The white has of York has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be a big turn. What we now do is move the um, set at the smallest hand size. They're both on eight, so we have eight impulses this turn. This is the impulse track. Okay, with that done, we move straight to the operations phase. We should kind of have a look at what these hands are and have some plans for this turn. The first turn was a bit of a rookie turn, uh, a lot of little clumsy errors. Um, you'll notice in this turn that Ormond has set up in a combat situation basically. So he's wintered at home and when he returns from wintering, he's going to immediately engage in conflict, conflict with these two blocks and he is effectively blocked in. Locked in. You may be able to see. So what I've done is I've tilted the Lancaster blocks this direction. So if I come around here, you can see all what Lancaster can see. And if I tilt it in this direction, you can basically see what the House of York can see. Um, because, yeah, I'm playing this two-handed. Um, there's hidden information on the blocks, but as I've said before in the overview video, it's probably, of all the block games I've played, it's probably the game that least needs that hidden information. There's not, there are some hugely powerful blocks, um, but, you know, you don't really need to hide them. Um, I think it'd even be a bit more interesting if you had open information. So, um, the main reason I'm tilting the blocks in this direction is because they're all the same colour. And there's little to distinguish the nobles of Lancaster with the nobles of York. So tilting them mainly tells me their affiliation, who they're loyal to. So I know that anything I can see here is loyal to Lancaster and yeah, conversely, House of York. 
Now, uh, plans. So Lancaster tried to secure southern England. Um, it's a bit weird because you can do all this stuff, you can work on all the activities, and then everything resets in winter. Everyone comes home, and then when they all come back out again, they're in completely different positions because you get a choice, basically, of where you place your, your forces. Let me give you an example. This one here, um, Salisbury, for example, he can be placed here. He can be placed... Where else? The hardest part of this game is also finding these little heraldic symbols. So I can go to here, this is a great, um, a great reference chart. I can look at Salisbury. Cumberland, North Riding, or Kent. Okay, so that's Kent. Um, North Riding is up here, so he can, he can start all the way up here. And Cumberland, Sh I don't know where Cumberland Shire is, um, but he can start Cumberland Shire, where is it? I don't know, but he could start there if I ever find it. That's a third location. In fact, if you're ever looking for a location, you can come in here, Cumberland Shire, it's at 4.15. That's right, I was looking at that earlier. Um, so, 4... 4.15, it's way up the top here, way up there. So he's got a lot of flexibility in terms of where he can start. But I've decided to winter him down here. Now, in the first turn, I wintered a lot of the York forces in this area, in Wales and central England. Um, for whatever reason, I mean, they gained um, Suffolk and Wiltshire, um, and I just, the way things kind of evolved, during winter, it's very interesting, you place one block out at a time, and it just so happened that uh, <laughs> the forces of York tended to gravitate around this area. So it looks like they'll make a move on London, and Henry is kind of surrounded. He's being protected by Somerset and the London garrison, but it could be an interesting battle developing if York decides to push and tries to... Oh, and we've also got uh, these guys here. So a big, big York force here, a big Lancaster force here. So Henry kind of wants to link up very early on. Um, yeah, or he could be in trouble. A lot of York forces around um, north, east, west riding. Um, Pretty sure Pembroke faces that way. Uh, and then, yeah, they've re kind of gained. There was some tension up in the north there in the first turn, but it's um, shifted back towards Lancaster. So in terms of, in terms of planning, uh, both sides exhausted. You get basically these um, influence points per turn. You get a lot of these uh, between 30 and 40. You start off the first turn with about 20 and they gained a lot. You can place these to influence nobles, and they're very active in influencing nobles. You can see here, this is what's left. I think about three of those were casualties. Um, so there's only sort of about six nobles not influenced on that first turn. As, a, as an op on a card, a side can spend these influence points to try and influence a noble. And this is resolved kind of at the end of the turn. Unfortunately, they have to, after buying bidding, basically, for all these, these titles, they, um, they don't have many influence points left. So I think there'll be a lot more fighting this turn. And I think York wants to set the objective of eliminating Henry the Sixth. Let's see if they can do it. Uh, so I think uh, what happens basically is both sides have their hand and they select cards simultaneously. But I think we'll pick a York card first. Let's look at their hand. These allies that come into play, you can discard them at any time for a special bonus. Withdraw before combat, don't want that. Select a friendly noble before rolling. Don't roll for those blocks, that's pretty cool if I ever lose Richard of York. Um, you know what I also need to do is I need to um, rebuild some steps because there was some pretty intense fighting in that first turn and a lot of uh, a lot of my units were really smashed, and Richard of York, in particular, is down to just two steps. So I'm going to double check. Uh, what I want to do is a mustering. And I think, I know, I mean, I, I could rush on Henry, but at the same time, they could rush on York. 
uh, Richard of York is in West Riding in here. You can see he's flipped over, he's down to two steps. He does have the title of, I think, oh, he's Chancellor now, I made him Chancellor. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Yorkists want to push on Henry, maybe they can do both. Maybe they can both um, build up and attack. So let's try and play, geez, that's a good ally. There's a lot of good allies this hand. Choose any player, that player must move five of the influence tokens from any roles. That's a nice card, but I think I'll play it for ops. So this is what the York faction is going to do. It's a three up card, they're not gonna play the event. The um, forces of Lancaster, uh, they are worried about Henry. He's the king and he's kind of surrounded by Yorkist forces, so. And these guys, at least one of these blocks is going to be locked in combat. Basically, they pin each other in. Um, I can easily get, there's a pretty good movement. There's basically, each block has four movement points to spend. So I might, this is all play card, that's interesting. Um, a lot of low op cards. Click any friendly shire containing one or more blocks and gain some steps. That's good for a post-battle thing. England for the English. Remove the Burgundians, got some French. So that'd be a nice card to save if the forces of York ever uh, ever decide to play some of those. That's another nice card because it lets me play the Welsh block. Um, geez, I've got some nice event cards and then some really bad low op cards. Uh, there are, there are well, a, lot of, a lot of Lancaster casualties up in the north as well. So I do want to muster up there. I feel like, I feel like York is more spread out and you can see, yeah, it's spreading out their forces. I'm kind of hoping that if I play the plague, you draw a random card for a plague location. And I'm kind of hoping that it's a location where York has forces. If I can draw something around here, although then Henry would be in trouble. I don't want to lose my king to a plague. Maybe not. Maybe I'll hold on to that. Get king. Maybe I just get Henry out of England. Out of London, rather. Uh, feels like a dangerous. I, I'm thinking... I could move some forces into London, but it's probably safe to move forces out of London. Um, so many low up cards, so let's play this. Uh, not knowing what the, the, uh, the Yorkists are playing, which could be dangerous because here's what's gonna happen. Um, whoever plays the highest card goes first, which means that the York Yorkists go first with three ops. They are going to spend one op to muster in West Riding, which gives Richard of York, their senior heir and the most important person, um, one more one more step. Yep. Now when they, they do so, they place a depleted marker on West Riding. And uh, yeah, that will provide them with a, I think a penalty to income from that Shire. If more than one step. Oh, it's only if more than one step. So I can muster more than one step. Uh, can muster troops, mustering costs one ops point per step. So I could, put, I could spend multiple steps, multiple points, ops points to put him back up to full strength. But I'm pretty happy with, with just one for now. Gives him back up to a little bit of strength. Um, and now I think we're gonna make a move on London. So let me pan you around so you can see what forces of York can see. They've got Norfolk right here with Lieutenant of Ireland. He's got to activate and he's going to, he can command, so he's a very senior rank. In the bottom right corner is his rank. Four is the highest, which is Warwick here. And the bottom left two is how many blocks he commands. One, two, three. Oh, look at this. I could, I could activate Warwick 
and go one, two, three. Pick up Norfolk. Oh, no, I can't because he can only command two other blocks. Hmm, okay. What I could do is go one, two, three, four, and we'll march into London. Now, I should point out, every time a force moves, so let me bring that back. There are interception rules in this game. And I think they're... It's adjacent to a non-contested shire. Okay, well they can't intercept because this is a contested shire. So Warwick can move in there for one. It's contested so they can't intercept. We can move back two to there. Three here to pick up Suffolk. And then four, he's going to march into London. We're going to fight Henry VI. Now, in starting this battle, I place an attack marker just to show, it's hard to see that, but just to show where the attack originated from. So that's one, two ops. Um, now, I'm going to bring in, pick up Norfolk, and he's going to go one, two, and they're going to be the reinforcing force. So I've got a lot, I've got seven Yorkist blocks converging on London to try to take out Henry. That's going to be, that's, that's, and with seven blocks in that space, effectively, um, that is going to pin up to seven Lancaster forces. So even if Lancaster wanted to move Henry out, they'd need to move at least, I guess, seven, uh, eight, nine, to have the seven pin to be able to move two out. Henry has special rules. He needs to be basically babysat by uh, another noble. That's one, two, three ops for York. We now get Lancaster's one op. And this is their perspective. And Henry's in trouble. I don't think... So they probably should have played a high op card to get him out of there. Ooh. He could evade. He could evade, of course. Um, okay, so let me rewind that a bit. Before they're about to attack here, these guys hadn't moved yet. Okay, so as they're about to move in, Henry and Somerset can evade away from that space. He definitely does not want to fight. Um, you can attempt one invasion, declare the attempt, and form an invasion stack with a leader. Now I think, this is going to be a bit weird, I think Henry, it's hard to see these blocks, but um, uh, oh geez. Henry has special rules guiding his what he can and can't do. Uh, it's a bit unusual. Henry of Lancaster. Cannot be a leader for movement or combat. Okay. Maybe led in movement only by noble rank two or higher. So he's being led in movement by Somerset. So it's Somerset who is actually doing the evasion here. Uh, he rolls a die and he needs to roll less than or equal to his command rating, which is two. It's a fail. So they fail to evade out of London. Then they're swamped by Warwick and by Norfolk, who arrives as a reinforcement to this battle. Uh, and there's, I don't think there's going to be... What can we do? What can we do? Okay, maybe we could pick up Buckingham here, can march into battle, maybe save... Oh, save Henry for one round, if he can just... just uh, Babysit him for one round of combat, and then get him out of here. So he is going to. Here we go. We've got Buckingham here with our one op. Buckingham and the soldiers attached to his title or his office. 
they use command two blocks. So he's got his office and he'll command Devon. And they're gonna go marching. One, two, three. He goes flying. They are initiating an attack into London. Which is interesting, because it now means that they are the attacker. And Warwick is the defender. That's their one op. That's all they can do. Yeah. And that's the first card play of the turn. With that done, okay, now we go to That's the end of uh, the action step. We now go to the combat step of, uh, of, of this card. We, as I just said, um, Buckingham entered the combat last. So he is the, the attacker. Um, these guys under Norfolk were reinforcements, so they can't participate in the first round of combat. Um, and in fact, I think the first round of combat has to be between these guys and these guys. And I think, this is where it gets a bit weird, but I think Henry and Somerset serve as reinforcements, perhaps? Um, so I'm a little bit vague on the rules. Okay, so these are all the forces participating in combat. They're coming in to attack Warwick, who moved in first. And the way this works is you designate a leader and the blocks they are commanding. So I'm going to designate Warwick and he's going to use his Captain of Calais office forces and Suffolk here, okay? Which means that Worcester is left as a reserve and doesn't participate in this round of combat. So these are the Yorkist forces fighting this first round. On the um, Lancaster side, we've got Buckingham commanding two blocks. Oops, sorry, this is just off camera. And he has his Admiral forces, and he's bringing in Devon. Okay, so combat is simultaneous. If there's an air in combat, they can charge. Uh, not doing any of that. So now we just look at the dice and we make some combat rolls. So let's do Yorkist forces first. Again, keep in mind this is all simultaneous. We have a blue, green, green for Suffolk, uh, Suffolk. a red, I need to reach over and grab some more dice. Red, blue, blue for Norfolk. And a red, red. That's pretty good, that's a pretty good title. All right. Um, let's roll these dice and see how we go. So this is the cumulative combat dice for the, uh, the Yorkist attack. And they hit on different results. Oh God, that's an absolute, that's a stinker. That's a lot of ones in there. That is no, oh wait, one hit from that four. One hit, that's all they managed. So we'll keep that in mind. One hit on those guys. In defense, Buckingham gets a red and two blues. A blue and a green for the Admiral. And a blue, blue and green. So I'll need to roll some more blue dice after this. So these dice plus two more blues Right. Now reds hit on a four, five, or six. Blues hit on a four or five, and greens only hit on six. So I've got two hits so far, with two to go, two hits. So it's two to one, and you always take hits from the blocks with the most steps. So they take a step each, two, and Devon will take a step. 
if it's even, you get to choose, I think. Okay, first round of combat done. Now these reinforcements enter battle, and both players can decide what they want to do. Now, Buckingham is thinking that he has an inferior force here. He's five up against seven. And in addition, these guys are rolling far better blocks, so he doesn't really want to fight combat. Um, so instead, pretty sure he wants to retreat. And he'll retreat with Henry. So he's come charging in, he's fought a brief battle, he's rescued, <clears throat> rescued Henry. Ah, after the second combat round. So he has to fight a second round of combat after the second combat round. So he has to fight one more combat round. So we'll bring in, um, again, it has to be, has to be Warwick, because he's rank four. He'll bring in Norfolk. And we'll bring in the captain of Calais. And Buckingham will try and make a good show of it. He'll bring in Somerset, and they'll try and roll some really powerful dice and see what will happen. Um, Yep, okay. So we'll roll the sorry, and it's a bit shade, it's hard to see those 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 cubes, those blocks. Um we'll roll the York dice first. They get a red, blue, blue. They get a blue, blue, green, and two more red. So I have one more blue dice to roll after this. It's a miss. Uh, that's much better. That is four hits with one more blue to come. Five hits. Devastating attack. Okay, five hits on Lancaster forces. That's gonna be huge. Um, Lancaster in defense gets a red, blue, blue, a blue, green, and then a red, blue, blue. So I have this, and then two more blue dice to roll. Six is hit on red. Ooh, that's it. And what I say, two more blue dice to roll. And five's hit on blue. So nothing there. Just the one hit. Now, uh, I believe Norfolk has four steps, so he takes a hit, because he's the strongest block. These guys now have to take five hits. So it's going to be one, and then these guys are tied, two, three, and then four, and then five. Ouch. But they've protected Henry. And now, after the second round of combat, they can retreat. Whew. Uh, so the attacker must retreat back to the Shire from where they entered. And of course, there's going to be a lot of overstacking here in Berkshire. And huge overstacking in London. Stacking limits are the Shires. Oh, I've got the garrison as well. So we did that at garrison. Um, uh, they don't roll too well compared to what we were rolling for uh, the. Lancaster forces. So I don't think they would have. Um, I guess for a blue and a green. I think the force that we brought to combat was stronger than that, so we won't wouldn't have used that anyway. Um, now, these guys win the day. They're in London. And we can do. There's a couple of sort of victory checks that we need to do. So block status, no noble was eliminated in the engagement. No block was killed, blah, blah, blah. There's no subsequent engagements. The victor is clear. <clears throat> there was an enemy heir present in the enemy force. So the forces of York gain a, sorry, that should be there, gain a point of popular support. Post-battle movement. 
Now, um, if the victor's blocks violate the stacking limits, they can move blocks according to uh, basically moving to a shire without enemy blocks. So what do we want to keep here? We want to keep, I think, um, oh, I've got their title. So Norfolk is Lieutenant of Ireland. I think he'll remain in London. Those guys, and we might move Warwick back to Buckinghamshire or Buckinghamshire. Each of these spaces are referred to as shires. Okay, so victory for York in London, but nothing kind of long term to write home about. They have certainly kind of scared Henry. They've hurt um, Buckingham's forces, but there's nothing really, nothing, <laughs> kind of no shift in the in terms of victory conditions. The level of popular support is, is lovely, but Henry's still alive. He's now got a big Lancaster force here. Um, the question is, Yeah, so now we do a stacking check. So after all battles have been completed, stacking limits are checked. And unfortunately, there are too many blocks here. These guys are within stacking limits. They're within stacking limits. They can actually have another block there if they wanted to. These guys exceed it by a heck of a lot. Um, each block in the Shire has to roll for attrition, and this is where it's going to hurt. Uh, okay, so attrition is basically you roll a d6, and on a 1 to 2 you lose a step. So I'll take these across to the die tray and let's roll for them one at a time. Buckingham is safe. His Admiral block is safe. That's cocked but close enough. Somerset is safe. Devon is safe. Ooh, Henry. The odds are not in your favour. He's safe. Okay. Attrition roll works out for Lancaster. And that's it, pretty much. That is one operations phase. Yeah, okay. Whew. I can tell you what, York smells blood. They got the better of that combat in terms of steps, and they are keen to follow up. Uh, York picked first at that time, so Lancaster will pick first this time. They're going to get the heck out of there. They're going to play a high card for initiative to try and skedaddle. Um, York wants to pursue, and they've got the same thing in mind, so they will play a high card as well, not knowing what Lancaster has played, just wanting that initiative. It's a tie, and I'm pretty sure whenever there's a tie, the king chooses, and the king wants to choose himself <laughs> to, uh, to go first. I'm just going to double check that, but I'm pretty sure the king resolves all ties, including Just double checking. Ties broken per 10.5.1 and 10.5.1 says the king breaks ties. Tiebreaker is play control of the king who makes the decision. So they will definitely want to go first. And where is a place of safety for these? Oh, it should be a combat here as well before that happens. Sorry. Um, two combats. So there's a combat here as well. And we've got Southwick and two steps there. This should be a pretty straightforward one. Um, got a red and a, a blue and a green. 
and a blue and a blue from York. So let's see what they can do. Uh, two hits, not bad. And over here, these guys have got two blue. One hit. So the two hits brings them down to there, and the one hit brings them down to there. Uh, they have to fight one more round of combat. That's only the first round. We now get blue and a green, and a blue and a green. One more hit would kill them off. That's one more hit. They still get to roll one die on defense, needing a six, nothing. So this, this, uh, this noble is in danger. Whenever a noble loses their last step, we roll on the elimination chart. Um, he rolls a five. He is wounded. So he becomes inactive. Straight over here. And that's it. Another combat over here. We have got Oxford as the treasurer against Essex. Oxford rolls two blue and a green plus a bonus blue for the treasurer. Essex will be rolling two blues. No hits for Oxford. Can Essex get some hits? One hit, and Oxford has to take that. Okay, second round of combat. Two blues and a green for Oxford. No hits yet again. Essex on the defensive gets another hit, and Oxford will take that as treasurer. Oxford still has the upper hand, but um, I don't know. Combat's not going the way he wanted it to. One more round. We'll see if he can turn the tide. One hit. And Essex will roll one hit as well. So one hit on Essex. One hit on Oxford. He has to take that step. He's down to one step each. Whereas Essex has two steps. He's going to retreat. Back to Cambridge. Essex, that's, that's York victory across the field. London, Wiltshire, and Essex. Essex wins in Essex. It's looking good for York. Okay. Um, so now, that was the combat I forgot to resolve in the first operations. No, uh, no attrition. So we go straight to the next turn, and yes, the king is even more desperate to get the heck out of there. He, he's going to flee, but where can he flee to? Maybe down to Devon. We've got some good forces here, Margaret and Exeter at down in Devon, and they can pick up maybe a Rundell on the way. So Buckinghamshire. Uh, no, we're going to go Somerset, Devon, and the king. The king is attached to... Somerset, they're going to activate for one op, and they're going to go one, two, oh, where can they go? <laughs> they, want, they want to flee. <laughs> um, or maybe they muster. I could muster, oh, there's only one point in there. Somerset, I think I retreat back to here. One, two, three. That's one op. For my second op, I'm going to Muster here, one, gives Somerset back a point, and two, I'm going to spend two ops to muster, and that is going to deplete Somerset, that's to save the king. Um, that's three ops, they moved, they mustered, they mustered, because they're desperate to, yeah, get some of those points up. Looking now at York, and they see now that Buckingham it was either, I mean, York could always chase. That's the problem. So, you know, they could go one, two, three, four. They could reach the king in this space. That's why I decided to muster there. Do I keep the pressure on? They're now, they've now got seven, three, four, five, six, seven steps, seven dice. Or I could eliminate Buckingham. I could take a...
I muster first and then move. Are there any limitations on what you do after you uh, after you muster? No, they can't. Okay. Um, I also have I've got Warwick up here, so I could I could do two things. I could attack the king, and oh, I've got this force in Wiltshire as well. I could do so much. We could really put a force down here. And let's let's. Okay, we're going to activate Norfolk. He's going to leave Suffolk in London with the garrison. He can command two blocks. He's going to move straight in here to Buckingham. And Buckingham doesn't want to fight. He wants to evade. So he's going to try and roll a two or less. He succeeds and he evades to Hampshire. Okay, now on an evasion... on an evasion they evade all blocks of the same shire yep and they can continue following so one two straight in and I think Buckingham will try to evade again fail so he has to fight a battle here alright so there's going to be one battle here they're in trouble. Now, uh, we're not going to let off the king. We're going to go. Now we've got Warwick. He doesn't have a huge force, but one, two, three. I can guarantee you Somerset wants to evade. He fails. There's a combat here. That's two ops spent. And he is attacking... Let's get this attack marker. They're attacking from that direction. I should also point out another attack. They're attacking from that direction. Third op will be to bring these two guys in Wiltshire, reinforcing that battle. We're going to pin the king down here in Devon and Cornwall. And let's see how that works out. Our, our mission here, the York mission, is to eliminate the king. They want to kill Henry. Okay, combat now. Uh, and so the king, um, the player won't first pick any shire, oh, so they don't pick anything because they're not the attacker. So then it goes, so the king picks their battles first. The king is not attacking anywhere. Then it goes to the York faction second, and they can choose the order of their battles. And I think they'll pick the king's battle first, because we really want this one to win. So, ooh, we have Somerset in command, and he can command two other blocks, Henry and Devon. I can tell you, I think they're in trouble. Um... In fact, I may have made an error. I think Henry can always participate in combat, but anyway, he only rolls two greens. I don't think he c c contributes a command point when added to combat. So Somerset could, in effect, command one additional block here uh, with his two rating. And we have Warwick commanding the York forces with these guys coming in on the second round as reinforcements. So the forces of Lancaster, red, blue, blue, the king has two greens, and Devon there has a blue and a green. Let's see the roll. Lancaster attack. Oh, that's terrible. One hit. One hit. Okay, let's see what York can do. We have Salisbury with a blue. We have the captain of Calais. With that, then we have two blue and a green for Warwick. The red dice are really, really powerful. They hit on four or more. One, 
two hits. Okay. So two hits here. Somerset has to take one. And then Somerset has to take the next one because he's the strongest block. And one hit over here. And I think it has to be Warwick. Okay. Second round of combat. These guys are available. Definitely bring the captain in. We will bring in... You can have a rest. And we'll keep Warwick in the fight. Okay. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six steps left. So six hits would really, really help. <laughs> okay, so Lancaster has got a blue and a green dice. They have two green dice for the king. And they have a blue and a green for Devon. Here we go. One, two, three. That's pretty good. A hit on the green dice, only hits on six. Three hits. And in response, York gets two red for the captain of Calais. They get a blue and a green for Montag. And they get a blue and a green for Warwick. Let's see what they can do. Six hits would kill them off. I don't think that's going to happen, but definitely not going to happen. One hit. Okay, the one hit can be on Devon. Three hits here. I think one, two, Three. Ooh, and that hurts. That really hurts Warwick. Um, they've still got five steps left. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They've got one more step. And they're rolling better dice, but Warwick is so close to defeat. And he is the most important block on that York side. But the king is right there. So first of all, um, I should point out, so the retreat decision. After the second combat round, each player has the option to retreat with the attacker choosing first. So does Warwick want to retreat? It could be, he could die. Um, Just checking the combat rules. I determine the attacker and defender. Um, yeah, it has to be Warwick. So Warwick has to be the leader. Um, and his captain of Calais has the best red die. Um, he still has two steps left. But if I suffer three steps, one, two, three, Warwick is potentially dead. It's a scary prospect. And then if I retreat, I'm going to suffer attrition anyway. I'm going to do it. Let's do it. We're going to charge. Not literally. Just kind of like keep fighting. Um, and now, uh, and the king's happy. King Henry's like, oh, let's keep fighting. Yeah. Okay. Blue and green for Somerset. A green and a green for the king, and a single green for Devon. Five dice, geez, got four greens and one blue. That's, look at that dice, just cocked on nothing. One hit. It's not the three, so Warwick will survive. <laughs> I've never seen a dice cocked on that. Uh, okay, we have a blue and a green, a red, and another blue for Warwick. All right, here they go. Bring it to the king. One hit. All right, well, that, that, that will be on Somerset, and this will be on, is that uh, Southwick? Southwick takes a hit. They're all down to one step now. Warwick will not retreat. And King Henry has four steps among his forces. He will not retreat. He's insisting that his men fight to the last to protect him. Which means that Henry's now rolling four green die in combat. Hey Joffrey, welcome. 
no hits. Green's only hit on a six. So it's no hits for Henry. Warwick now gets a red, a blue, and a green. Oh no, sorry. I wanted... Uh, yeah, he's on his last step, so I'll bring him in. What's he rolling? Two greens? Two greens or a blue? Yeah, we'll bring him in. So two greens. So we get uh, a red... That's Warwick rolling, sorry. Hard to see that. That is a green dice. So a red, a green, and two more greens. One, two hits. Okay, Henry has to take a hit. And Devon is a casualty. So he could potentially die. At this point, uh, we have to take a step here as well, and we'll take it off the Captain of Calais um, office. Now, when the last... So Devon, I know, will roll on the elimination chart. I think when an office takes their last casualty, the individual loses that office. Uh, <laughs> killed blocks. The office is removed. They keep the office card and they maintain their abilities. Only the office block is lost. That's pretty good. So they just lose the Captain of Calais block. It's removed, but they don't lose the, the benefits, which aren't that important anyway. Devon, however, may die. We'll resolve that in a moment. For now, I think the king has had enough. Um, I don't think they like their chances. Two green dice. He's going to retreat. Um, he's going to retreat... Oh, jeez. To Dorset. To avoid stacking, overstacking. Which means that Warwick can advance in here. He's overstacked as well. He'll have to move one unit out. And he'll move these guys up to Gloucester, I think. Devon now has to make a roll to determine what happens to him. We roll a d6. It's a three. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Um, double checking the elimination. Yep, he's killed. So he's unavailable for the rest of this turn. Um, Devon, it's all the way up there. I'll visit later. Okay, the king survives, but he's in trouble. Um, why the Lancaster just struggling in these battles? That's that combat resolved. Next combat now over here. And Buckingham was in trouble as well. So he has got a blue, a, a blue, a green, green, green against Norfolk's force, which consists of a blue, a blue. A green, a green, a blue, blue, green. Hey, Daniel, welcome. Yeah, it's, look, I'm rusty. Uh, there's, uh, as I said, I've just been learning this game this week. It's possible, uh, I don't treat this as a sort of foolproof play. I'm probably getting things wrong. Um, and I'm a bit clumsy as I work my way through it. But this kind of gives you a sense, at least, of how it flows. Okay, so Buckingham roll first. Blue, green. Green, green, nothing. Blue's hit on five or six, green's hit on six. There's nothing there for him to celebrate. So now, Norfolk gets two blue, two green, and two more blue and a green. So I've got to roll one more blue dice after this. One hit and one more blue, two hits. And that's going to hurt, so that's going to kill off his Admiral, and he's down to one more step, and that's only the first round of combat. Second round of combat, Buckingham is down to one blue dice. I'll roll that straight away. It's a hit, at least, so one hit on Norfolk. Norfolk rolls two, four blue, and three green. So I need one more blue after this. 
that's a hit. And Buckingham, one of the most important blocks on Lancaster, is dead. Uh, we do lose a step here, and it has to be from, oh, it can be from him as well. <laughs> it does look like yellow is winning, Ken says. Uh, four. Okay, so a roll of four on the elimination chart is a wounded. So he goes straight to inactive, and players can bid on him immediately. Um, it's my biggest concern about this game is the, the mass of yellow. Um, I have a wonderful idea to change this game, and basically it's where instead of using blocks, you'd use chips instead. And you'd stack up like poker chips with like a noble chip on top. So you basically have a noble like this, but use chips as their health points. And as they lose health points, they, they're effectively losing steps. So to give you an example, I could have um, Norfolk here, and if he's got three steps left, he could have three chips. Um, it could look the same, it could use the same sticker, but instead of having to rotate the blocks, use a blue, a blue, and a green chip underneath him. And as he gains titles, like Lieutenant of Ireland, you just gain, put two blue chips underneath his leader chip. So you don't have like the leader chip on top, um, you put this noble chip in the middle. So you have the noble chips and then there's steps below as, as chips. So you've just got one stack of chips. But importantly, what you could do is kind of put a little clip around those chips to show that this is the House of York. Put a white clip around it and it makes it clear to see. Anyway, that's kind of an idea I had just for clarity because yeah, they're all yellow and if you bump a count, it like, yeah, if, you, if you're not rotating things carefully, suddenly a rundell has changed sides magically. Okay, so Norfolk won that battle. He's within stacking limitations, so he is good. Big victory over, over um, Lancaster. And no attrition rolls. Within stacking limits, within stacking limits, just within stacking limits, everyone's okay. So we proceed to the next card play. And I can tell you again that York is feeling pretty good. They, um... Oh, I have to remember, I've got these surprise cards. We'll play two, I guess. And, uh, okay, House of Lancaster. Oh, look, maybe we can weave our king through here. Oh, he can intercept, intercept, intercept. Um, we can get him down to Cornwall. We can do a naval move, maybe. Do I have a three-op card? I don't have a three-op card to do a naval move. Oh, we're in trouble. Um, what else? I can bring some reinforcements. To, where are my reinforcements? <laughs> Henry is saying... Where the hell are all the Lancaster allies? We've got Arundel over here. These guys have been bruised. They've got not two steps left. And then we've got all these guys scattered up the top here. Pembroke decided to go up north. I thought we'd do a northern campaign. Um, Northumberland's way up there. Audley's in the middle, but he's only got two steps. They're desperate to um, survive. Avoid battle, I can play that. I didn't realize. Um, got to hang on to that. So the king can avoid battle. Do we counterattack here? Do I send um, Exeter and Margaret? I don't know. They're such weak blocks. Um, maybe I muster as much as possible and hope for the best. If I muster Somerset two steps here, they're so weak. I need to check if Henry counts against stacking as well. Again, mentioning earlier that Henry and Margaret are both bound by kind of special rules. So Henry can't be a leader for movement or combat. He doesn't count against command limits for battle. Um, yeah, I'm guessing he still counts for blocks. Doesn't say he doesn't. So I'm kind of thinking I pull Henry all the way back to Cornwall. 
I will do that actually. So we'll play, oh, I just have a terrible hand. Now I'm gonna play a plague. Let's try and hurt the, um, the, the Yorkist blocks. This is interesting, this is the first plague I've played. So we draw a card, so they're tied, so the king decides first. He wants his plague to happen first before these guys can do anything. Um, location will be in the top right, so that's Durham. Durham's way up in the north, way up here. So, so uh, gee, that's, that's gonna hurt, that's gonna hurt Lancaster because all the blocks next to the plague are Lancaster blocks. Oh. Uh, okay, so that's the plague location. Um, that Shire and all Shires that share a border with it affected. Step losses equal the SV in the Shire, uh, the, the Shire value. <laughs> this is just a, a Lancaster disaster. Um, and the Shire value minus one in all adjacent Shires. Okay. All right, so it's, it's two minus one in this Shire. It's one step loss there. It is two minus one. It is one step loss there. So Lancaster's losing steps on their own card. Um, of all the places, that is one of a small number that only affects Lancaster. And I had to draw that. Anyway, um, now they get two ops. They're going to move to Cornwall and hide out in southwest England and hope that winter comes fast. Uh, Exeter, maybe he can put up a wall. He'll muster here for one point, gaining one step back for the second op. And that's it. They're just hiding. Um, I haven't been keeping track of these impulses either. Uh, how many cards have we burned through? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three. This is the third impulse. The um, Now I do have, I'll point out, I do have two York ally cards. Uh, not really handy right now, but I do have to keep those in mind. So there's a few little bits and pieces you'd have to keep in mind. Your cards in your hand for avoiding an interception and all that. Um, okay. I think I'd like to muster with this. We'll build up our forces. Who are we going to attack with? So what I want to try and organise is a strike force <laughs> into southwest England. Uh, so let's look at these two forces. I'm just going to get some more light on the situation. Hopefully see those blocks a bit better. Okay, so looking for a strike force out of these two. Who's the strongest? Um, these guys have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. <laughs> They're definitely the strongest. Um, geez, they can charge straight in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus five. Let's go. We'll go one, two. We will attack. We're now attacking. Where did my attack markers go? Margaret. Um, and I will, with the second op, I'll give Warwick another step because he's, as I said, an important noble, the most important noble, down to one step. I don't want to leave him like that. So he's, uh, oh, that's depleted. He can't. Um, okay. So the king depleted the shire and then took off. That's what happened. Well, uh, let's boost this up one step. All right, and we do have a combat. 
Margaret and Exeter versus Norfolk's Strike Force. Okay, so Margaret's rolling a blue and a green. Exeter is rolling two blue and a green. And they have five steps. Here's what they're rolling. Ooh, two hits. And these guys are rolling a blue and a green. A green and a green. And a blue, blue. Green. Let's see what we get here. Um, I'm just wondering also. My allies give me extra green dice. Probably not that important. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, four hits. Okay, so blues hit on five or more. Greens hit on six. That's four hits. That's going to be painful. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, God, I think Margaret's in trouble. Exit is dead. And two hits here. Uh, we've got one, two. Second round of combat. Margaret has to fight. She gets nothing. These guys roll that. Sorry. Three green hits. Margaret. Whew, that's another York combat victory. Now, Exeter first. He uh, rolls on the elimination table. He's dead. So he's also unavailable this turn, oh, uh, inactive. It's, it's uh, sorry, what is this status technically called? It's called unavailable. Yep, next turn he'll be inactive. It's a massacre. Um, Margaret, so what happens to Margaret? I think from memory, when she dies, she doesn't die. She just goes to France. But I'll double check the special Margaret rules again. Okay. Uh, if the Queen's block is eliminated, she will return. She will return during the next wintering. Okay, so she's just going to disappear and return. It's only if Henry and Prince Edward are both out of play. So she's always, she's just resilient. She cannot be killed outright. You have to get Henry first, but now Henry's in a big trouble, in a lot of trouble, sorry. <laughs> That's impulse three. We move to impulse four, and I can tell you the, uh, the Yorkists are not going to let up. We only need one op, really. Um, let's play this ally for one op. What's York going to do? Um, <laughs> they cannot do a lot. Saw the ranks. Select a friendly controlled shire. Yes, they will play that for the event. They have more ops, so they'll play first. They roll a dice. Hey, they gain two steps. Uh, one, two. Ooh, that is important. Very important. Huge event, huge event. Because here comes Yorkists. All right, over here. Could this be the end? There is no retreat path. There is no retreat from Cornwall. They are cornered. They've chased them from London to where they end up? Wiltshire, Somerset, Devon, Cornwall. York has been unrelenting in their pursuit of Henry and Somerset across the country. Here is the Lancaster roll. A blue, it's hard to see, but it's a blue and three green for nothing. I think the writing is on the wall. Here is the York roll, needing four hits. They get one. Henry will take the hit. Second round of combat. Again, there is no retreat from this. You blank are just, oh, what can we play? Can we play any surprise events? Um, no. I can't, can't avoid that. No, there's nothing I can do. I can add 
My ally, I have to play this. My ally will add a red die in line combat. Yep, it will add a red dice, which will miss. That's what the red die rolled. Oh, okay. Well, here comes York. One, two more hits. One, two, Somerset is dead. Or oh, well, not dead, but suffers an elimination. Um, yep, Henry's in trouble. Uh, Henry now rolls a green die. Oh, it's a hit. Um, and in return, York rolls their dice and they hit as well. So Henry's eliminated. These guys will take a hit. But they're in trouble. Somerset rolls for elimination. It's a four. He's wounded, which means he's inactive. But he's no longer associated with the House of Lancaster. Henry. Um, Henry is assumed to have been captured in his tent. This is a special rule for Henry. He's assumed to have been captured in his tent and he's executed by the victor. Remove Henry's card and block from the game. So his card is over here. Henry is, was king, and now he's lost his head. Now this is the king's block. The king would normally get this, but Henry has a special rule where he doesn't get the king's army because he's so inept. So he is gone. And there is no king, which means that chain of command now falls to, guess who? It's the chancellor who is, who did I make the chancellor? I'm looking way at the top here. I can't even see where it is. Um, Chancellor. Uh, York, Richard of York, of course. So Richard of York, leading the House of York, is now the most senior noble in the British Isles. And he's way up there. Um, that was impulse four. We now move to impulse five. Okay. Um, York dominates southern England uh, through a string of undefeated battles. They won, they won, they, they won everywhere. London, Hampshire, Wiltshire, Somerset, Devon and Cornwall. Did not lose a single battle. Um, it's incredible. What else can they do? So let's have a look. The turn, the turn is not over. Um, so incidentally, you would have seen at the start of the video, I showed you this is the, uh, the Lancaster Hand of Cards. They've got four left. One, two, three, four, basically. But they also have what are called their house cards. And right now, they have, they have no heir. Uh, Yep, Exeter's dead. I was looking for Exeter, <laughs> he's dead. Um, but none of these, this can enter turn three or later, turn five or later. Um, I should have used that, damn it. Always gotta remember these cards. That basically cancels combat. I don't think it would have saved. There's still four turns left. Uh, it was almost inevitable. They should have run to the north. They got cornered down here. Henry should have run north instead. So I want, I need an heir, but what happens if the heir is dead, is the question I have. So, can I play my house card? Um, <laughs> what happens when you play an heir card and the heir is dead? I don't think you can. Um, so basically royal heir cards are similar to events. When played, you use the implement the event. It uh, designates the air block. If 
tries to play all potential heirs. Whew, if the heir is inactive, well, he's not inactive, he's unavailable. If the heir is... I don't think I can play this because it doesn't give me an option for unavailable. There's, a, there's an option if it's inactive. There's an option if it's friendly controlled. There's an option if it's unavailable, but not if he's currently dead. So basically, Exeter, that kind of, yeah, dead, not not, not currently alive. Um, and I don't know what that means for King. I'll have to figure that out later on. But I think that means that there's no eligible King on in the House of Lancaster. They have no eligible heir here. Eh, eh, here. Whereas Richard of York is the senior heir to the House of York, and they can bring on Edward of March now. Uh, oh, okay, so that can't be played. Yeah, very inept. Um, and there's no other house cards. Turn five, as I said, there's no other house cards they can play. I just need that Edward, Prince of Wales, to come out. So I can tell you what, York is going to play Edward of March, and these guys... Um, that would have been good too. If I had that ally in play, I could have discarded it to move a friendly heir and attach blocks into an exile block, do so instantly. So I could have exiled Henry immediately and saved him. But I would have had to put that into play and then discard it once it was in play, it's just kind of a two-step two sequence. This is, these, is, <laughs> these are the cards I've got. Um, I guess I'll play... I don't know what to do now. Um, I've lost Henry. I've lost Margaret. I've lost Southern England as Lancaster. Um, I think I'll put this ally into play. I'll play this so I don't even get to do it yet because... York has the higher opt card. They'll go first. Edward, Earl of March, here he is. Um, he is entering play. Use the March block, and they hold up two cards between turns. Not cumulative. So he enters play, and... It enters any of their home estates at full combat strength. All right, so any... Who's going to join Richard? Let's keep them all together, eh? Yep, stacking limit there is three. It's a shy value, plus one, four, three. Um, yeah, okay. That's in play. So, and I will also note that this now comes down to here as the York Junior heir, as such. And one op, and that's going to be an event that I put into play. Okay, uh, next combat round. So now, okay, look, York dominates. Their next step, I think, is to <laughs> is to look at securing victory. Next impulse, and I'll recap the uh, the victory conditions. There are two ways to win the game: a military victory or a political victory. To win a military victory, York must control five uh, Lancaster shires, so five red shires. Pembroke could be one; it's easily within reach. Um, it's really hard to see. This is probably the hardest part of the game, is seeing where enemy shires are. So I could say, that's one I could grab. Where are the other ones? I think Northumberland up there is one. I've got two. I've got West Riding. So I've already got one. I've got three. Lancaster. I've already got two, sorry. So one more will give me three. I'd need two more to win the game whilst holding on to friendly shires or the white shires. 
pretty sure that's one up there. Yeah, there's got to be more than that though, right? Oh, Lincoln. Lincoln over here is one. So I could. One, two, three, four. It's still only four. It says, uh, yeah, to win you need five enemy shires. Does that mean I need Northumberland? I need every single Lancaster Shire. Well, that's really hard. Uh, that's pretty, yeah, that's a pretty overwhelming victory to march all the way up to the north there and, and secure everything without losing any of my own home territories. So that's one possibility. I need to capture Lincoln, Pembroke, plus Northumberland way up there. For a political victory, I need to hold the office of king for, I think, five turns or control at least three-fifths of the nobles attending parliament on a given turn, excluding heirs and Margaret. So how do, I, how do I do that? How can I secure a political victory? Well, basically killing off more, <laughs> killing off more Lancaster nobles. Arundel's pretty tough. He's three steps. Um, these guys are down to one step. It's only one guy. It's um, Oxford with a title. If I can kill him off, um, yeah. Um, so do, I'm also thinking about next turn for income. I get income for every shire I occupy basically. Uh, so I could move to kind of spread my forces out. Three, three card plays left. I could spread out, get a lot of income. Deny the Lancaster income. Options, yeah. Or do both. Uh, try and eliminate Oxford. See, I'm pretty weak here. Warwick is very weak. Maybe I just... Um, maybe I move him one, two... Yeah, he can move to Pembroke. And then perhaps um, Muster out there in the west. All right, let's have a think about cards uh, and what to play. We've still got a really good hand of cards here for York. Well, really good. Treachery's there. Um, so I'm looking at this card and a plus one if my air is present, plus one if target block is your house's color. And that's unlikely. No enemy air, minus one if it's enemy house's color. So basically that's a red block. Margaret, for example, that's a kind of grey white block, House of York. Um, Pembroke up there is House of York. Exeter is dead. Um, Henry is dead. So they don't have. Oh, Richmond, yeah. Pembroke, I think. Um, maybe I just play one up for now. Yeah, and plan to move Warwick. Okay, well, what can these guys do? I think they'll play one up as well, but their plan is to influence some nobles. So I haven't demonstrated this yet. It happened a lot during the first turn. Basically, um, we... <laughs> Lancaster has a pool of influence tokens left. And with one op, they can place these tokens. I'll move the camera up to the... Uh, in fact, I might try and move the camera over towards Parliament so you can see it. This is the, the role of Parliament up at the top of the map there. And I pick one noble who I want to influence. And the nobles are all shown around this side of the board. So here they are. And what looks good? I'd love to get Somerset back. So I'm going to put every, uh, do I say everything? Let's say 
three plus a die roll, three plus six, that's too much. We'll say three plus four into Somerset because I really want to get Somerset back. Um, where is he? Oh, he's already got plus three, so I might make it five, three, four. Let's compromise. Four influence in Somerset. I say he's already got plus three. There are three roses on Somerset, so he's already, already leaning towards Lancaster. Um, just to zoom in on, Lanc um, on Somerset here, see these three red roses? That means I already get three points for Lancaster, plus the four that I secretly put down, which my York opponent doesn't know about. So York could try to contest that, but um, yeah. Now, uh, oh, York, what do they do? One op, do I move Warwick around to Pembroke? Um, I think I'll leave Montague at home. That's his home area. He, he can live here, he can winter here or Wiltshire. I think there was one other place somewhere. Um, so I'll move Warwick. One, two, three, four, into Pembroke. Yeah, it's not a, yeah, that'll do. All right, next card play. Uh, I think battles have really calmed down, but I'll play this because there are no, um, for the ops, basically. That's Lancaster, York. They can hold on to that for next turn. That's one of the cards they can save now. Um, what do we do? Two ops to try and influence some nobles? Yes. Uh, Lancaster will say they'll go first. Um, looking up at the role of parliament again. Sorry, moving this around. Two ops, they are going to... Ah, what have we got? What nobles are available? Beaumont, Clifford, we'll put one on Clifford. That's one op. And again, he's leaning Lancaster. And who else is available? Um, look at the nobles down here. Richmond, can I get Richmond back? Problem is, uh, yes, I'll play someone Richmond as well. So they're the two ops for the House of Lancaster. They're trying to, after their losses this turn, they're trying to um, rally some families to, to their cause. Uh, and basically, I think um, I think that York is going to do exactly the same thing. Um, two ops. You know what? They'll spend one op to get Warwick up a step. Again, most important noble. And a second op. Who are we looking at here? Who looks like a good noble? Um, Lovell is good. You can't see this off the side of the board, but um, Buckingham. Maybe we make a... Buckingham. Yes, we are going to make an attempt to get Buckingham to join our cause. So you may recall he was he was killed in battle, but wound well we thought he was killed, in fact he was wounded. He's no longer Admiral. Um, and York is saying, sorry about what happened in that battle. Would you like to come and join our cause? And they're trying to influence him. Okay. That brings us now to the final impulse of the turn. Um, these are gone. And there's one Lancaster card left. 
I'll play that for the ops. And we'll play that for one op. So Lancaster will go first. And they're going to muster. They're going to muster Northumberland one step. Oh, sorry, it should go one step. And they will muster uh, Pembroke one step for two ops. And York with their one step will muster Warwick one step. And that is the final impulse and the end of the operations phase. So after chasing down Henry, it was a pretty quiet end to the turn. That's now the end of the second turn. We're shifting, we'll be shifting towards the third, but first we finish the, um, the other steps. Now we do the influence phase and each player totals up the value of the shires they control and record that on the, the influence track around the outside of the board. Um, but it's not as simple as just, so you earn, um, you earn influence points for occupied shire. Each shire occupied by at least one friendly block earns the controlling player IPs equal to the shire value. Shires with a shire loyalty of your colour add one to that. Empty shires that are loyal to your house earn one P. Okay, so it doesn't matter that this is red or black or, or white. It's basically, it's worth two. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. A base of twenty-one. Okay, to that we add unoccupied, empty, friendly shires. This is York, so one, two, I think this is two empty York shires, so two additional points. So they're currently on 23. Ah, depleted, no, shires that are marked devastated or plundered are nothing. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, offices. So your office cards. So we're looking here at these three here. They earn additional IPs. So two plus three plus one is a bonus six. 29. Um, I could now play some ally cards to gain bonus IPs. But I won't, doesn't give me much. And now popular support. My popular support bonus is plus seven influence. So 36, better than last turn. So I get 36 influence points. And basically, they're all in a little pile down here. I'll get those later on. But for now, that's where they are. Now we do Lancaster. They have got two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, plus 10, 10, that is low, 10, plus, um, they're no longer the king, which means they also lose three popular support, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, Plus, for popular support, they gain one influence, 19. That is a low result. Uh, the consequence of losing king. Um, plus, losing land. Um, and just not being able to control anything down here. 
Uh, yeah. They do have their ally card, but it only gives them plus one, so they won't bother about that. That's the influence phase done. So we click those influence points. I'll do that later on, as I said. We now go to the king phase, and this is several steps. First, we check for military victory. We count the shires we control, and again, I don't control Northumberland, don't control Lincoln. So two shires, I could have made a run for it. If I could have defeated Northumberland, he was pretty low. I could have sent York, May uh, I could have done it, maybe, but I didn't. That would have been one way to maybe try to achieve victory in that turn, but it uh, didn't happen. We move, remove event items. This is stuff like Burgundians, French, Scots, Welsh. Now, each noble, each player prepares their nobles to attend Parliament. Every controlled noble must attend Parliament. Um, so basically, we move all attending nobles and any attached offices, office blocks to a place off the map board. So we take all the, everyone leaves their, their area basically. They're all coming to Parliament. We pick all these guys up and that is all that Lancaster has left on the board. That's an office block. Jeez, that's an office block. They have five nobles, two offices. This, is York. This is gonna be close to a political victory. I don't know what the numbers are, but. That's an office block. Chancellor. I should also add, there are special rules for each of these offices. So the Chancellor can... Oh, they gain the King's plus five votes. That's important. Um, once per turn, they can exchange one stack in Parliament with another stack without looking at either stack. Things like that. The Lord Admiral um, can make a C move for any stack they're the leader of. Uh, they died pretty early, though. The Lord Treasurer... Uses all ops of command point, blah, blah, blah. Can influence an additional noble. So all these little things that I keep forgetting about. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 versus 5. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a political victory because that's um, 17 out of 22 is more than 75% of the nobles. Um... But I think the saving grace for uh, Lancaster may be that the political check is made after this phase. Um, so the military check is made straight away. But the political check is made, if I understand this correctly, after the new nobles are added. Yeah, it's during it's during the uh, <laughs> the victory check phase, which happens after the king phase. You can see we're actually if I look at the sequence of play, we're at the king phase now. Victory check phase happens in just a moment. So there's a there's a possibility. Um, okay, so for each box that has a marker on it, do the following: the current king, um, in this case, it'll be the chancellor. Selects any noble with markers on the box. They're going to pick their own first. So, yeah, it's going to be hard to see, sorry. Hard to reach as well. I'm going to reach up here, check out Buckingham. I have at least his number, there's a three here. I have at least his number of influence points. Yep, 
So I now get Buckingham. He's an important, no, they're the Burgundians. Oh, he's Buckingham. Here he is, a powerful noble joining York. The rest, the other three, are all York, but. But I get this. I've got two allies here, and the allies say that I can add ally influence. So what that means is, for example, the House of York has these two cards: add one ally influence, add one ally influence. I can use these basically to try and cancel. Uh, Lancaster control of one of these nobles. So let's do the maths again. I think I should have 18 now to their 23. So I can stop them getting two nobles, I'll control at least 75. If they gain control of two, they just pull it back. Okay, so let's revolve, re resolve one at a time. Let's say Richmond, they have two plus two. So if I can deny him, um, what else have we got? Clifford. Yeah, okay, I don't think I can do it. What's more important? Denying Richmond. One, two, three, four. Um, what I'm going to do is the House of York will say, well, we will spend two ally points. We're going to spend both of our allies here to add two ally influence to stop you getting Richmond. And then... Um, Lancaster says, well, in that case, we'll spend our one ally influence to add one more point, which is what they need, barely, to gain Richmond back to their cause. We resolve the others. Clifford is just joining Lancaster, and Somerset is pretty strong. He will also join Lancaster. And that now denies these guys died. They will now return to inactive. That now denies York. Sorry for the mic cable. It denies York that uh, political victory. Okay. With that now done, we can vote for the king. We tally up our votes. Now here are the votes from last round. It was a narrowed Lancaster victory to secure king. I'm very confident that York will win this, but let's do the numbers. You basically look at all the numbers, uh, the nobles, and add up their rank. So we've got two, five, three, it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That's a huge drop in their vote from 40 to 23. It's a ranks, office votes, oh, and bonus from the track, one, 24. Lancaster, oh, sorry, York has got three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44 votes. So they've increased their vote by a lot. And now in a two-play game, <laughs> Lancaster basically says, well, we're going to vote for, we're going to vote for, I can find a Lancaster vote marker, I can't find it, but Lancaster. And then York says, well, we're going to vote for York. York wins the vote. Drum roll, that means that the new king, by popular vote, is Richard of York. He now secures his Majesty the King card, and he secures the King block, which he can use, and which will be attached to him 
if I can find him somewhere in there. I think he's behind Richard uh, Earl March there. Whew, okay, Richard, Duke of York is king. Now, <clears throat> the vote for king is done. Takes the king off his card, puts the king marker on their air, attach the king block, decrease the popular support marker for the previous king. I think I already did that. And these guys increased, but they can't go up any further. So they're at maximum increase. They're so hugely popular, the House of York. And Castrians are not happy. We now check for that political victory. Um, I should also point out, sorry. So they had, they had one turn as king. This is now York's first turn as king. Um, and now we end these other office terms. So all these other offices become up for grabs. We take them all and we decrease their support. So one, two, three, four, this goes. Um, same thing with all the offices over here. Yeah, we're going to have a big pile. Lancaster support is down to zero after that. And this takes a long time, so I won't go through it. But basically, what we do is I take my 36 IPs, influence points, for York, and we bid on these officers. I shuffle them all onto all the king, whoever is the king, which is York now, takes these all up, shuffles them into a pile, We'll flip the first one over and we bid on it. Secret bids, whoever bids the highest becomes the treasurer. And I can tell you now that York has got 36 IPs. Lancaster only has 19. So York is going to be with nearly three times as many nobles. These are the York nobles. These are the Lancaster nobles with three times as many, with almost twice as many IPs. They're going to be winning a lot more of these cards and they'll be in a very strong position heading into this third turn. I would guess that they could very likely secure a military victory on this third turn. But I've got to wrap it up here because the camera's running flat and this as I said takes a while to run through. You've got to auction off every card. I've got to allocate the IPs which I haven't done yet. Um, so I'll wrap it up here but again folks probably made mistakes but hopefully it gives you a sense of how this all plays out. That is a uh, Crown of Roses by GMT Games, card-driven game with blocks and block-based combat. Um, yeah, hopefully it's given you a sense of how it all plays out and uh, I'll be back with more later on. Thanks everyone and take care.